Okay, hello and welcome. Uh, we're going to give a few minutes to our colleagues to join. Of course we should. So uh, please, uh, as we're welcoming you, you can uh, write hello to the chat. The chat is open and maybe where you're joining us from, the city where you're joining us from. So we have a sense of where our audience is today. It's great to have you with us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all from Japan. Hi, hello, good Hi morning. Now. Or a good afternoon, wherever you are, because in some areas uh, it's the afternoon. So the chat will be open uh, from for for our speaker to see your responses. We're also using the Q and A for um, your questions, and we will be taking questions at the end. Um, great, great to see you all uh, joining us and writing the different locations. Uh, Leros, Indonesia. Imathia, hello. Japan again. Croatia. Okay, um, we're gonna start because I know that our speaker has uh, so many things to uh, to go through. Um, so hello again and welcome. Um, we're going um, to, in, this is in the framework of our Cultivating a Culture of Care theme. Uh, the series of webinars on um, caring through stories. So uh, my name is Silvia Karastathi. I'm the head of teacher support for uh, Language Search. And this series that we have designed, especially for language teachers, um, is especially uh, to be thinking about, we've invited speakers to think about the value of uh, sharing our stories in and beyond the classroom in a world where AI tools can write an original story in a second. So uh, this is the first webinar of a series of four. And uh, throughout um, our um, term, to, we will hear about storytelling activities for young learners. In the next webinars, we will hear about the use of film and video narratives, also about classroom management stories and stories that raise awareness about the environment. In these webinars, we hope that our speakers will remind us of the incredible power and value of uh, human storytelling and also offer you concrete suggestions to get students curious and excited about storytelling. So today we have with us um, an expert storyteller, Zafi Mandali. She's an active teacher, teacher trainer, and also storytelling coach and educational consultant. She has served many years as director of studies um, and uh, she's also served TESOL Greece for um, in this as a C coordinator for the drama and literature C, her soft point uh, is also is storytelling as you will see, and she has um, created a lot of her work and she has uploaded that uh, in uh, eltstorytelling.com and we are so excited to have you uh, in our first webinar of this series. Afi, welcome. The floor is yours. We're very excited to hear you. Thank you, Sylvia, uh, for the introduction. I hope I will live up to your expectation. Thank you, Language Cert, for uh, providing the uh, platform for teacher training. And uh, thank you all for being here to uh, watch this. And for those ones who are going to be watching the recording, because now I've been getting messages of them working. And um, Happy New Year. And may I say, peaceful new year. Well, as you see, the topic is caring through stories. And um, uh, I'm talking about a topic that I like, which is storytelling. And storytelling covers a huge spectrum of uh, uh, topics. Now, we're going to focus on social and emotional learning. And once upon a time, if you asked um, or if you use the term social and emotional learning, they wouldn't know what it is because social and emotional learning as a term has only been um, circulating in the past 10 years. So here I am. I don't need to say much about uh, myself now. And um, I am going to give you an idea of what is social and emotional learning. So in this journey today, is the online storytelling journey, we will define cell. We will say why 
social and emotional learning is important. Uh, and I'll say why use stories to teach it and not lectures. And which stories? There are, I'm going to give three stories which all pass messages of uh, um, skills uh, of uh, social and emotionally intelligent person. And as we tell and as we go around, you'll see how to prepare a story, the story stage to prepare the kids, how to pre-teach vocabulary and uh, techniques to tell interactively because you are there to engage the kids. I mean, at the end of the day, we want kids to be in the receiving end, hearing stories, but also at the um, giving end, telling stories. And in between, there are those activities that will um, take away, um, get their uh, feelings and get them speaking, get them responding, get them interacting, get them doing. Um, and I hope that uh, you'll find ways that you will adapt these or others, uh, these techniques and perhaps these stories to your classes. Now, that is the definition of social and emotional learning, which you'll find online given by Kaisal. And all I did is just break it down to um, make it a bit more understandable to all of us. So when we're talking about cell, we're talking about knowledge, skills and attitudes that young people and older people should have um, in order to develop healthy identities, uh, uh, to manage their emotions and so get to their uh, personal and collective goals because we are um, society, we have a collective goals. Um, we need to understand others, we need to show empathy to others, uh, we need to build a um, supportive relationship and therefore make caring decisions. Um, this is all the spectrum that covers the um, social and emotional learning philosophy. Now, we are teachers, we are supposed to be looking at the language development of our kids, but... Um, let's be truthful, we do many more things. Uh, we always create a positive learning environment to help them with those skills that will develop a whole being, healthy identities in all uh, shapes and forms. We teach them empathy, compassion, uh, good relationship with others, um, uh, how to make responsible choices, Generally, we create multimodal experiences. Now, why is social, um, why is cell important? First of all, it's always been important because it's part of the human nature. But you know what? Lately, with all these um, uh, digital, era, the digital era where we are so focused on the computers, on our screen, sending messages, not looking straight into other people's eyes, we are becoming more detached, less outgoing, as if we are losing some of our humanity. And Cell is telling us, is showing us how to process, first of all, understand, regulate our emotion is what the, we know as know thyself. Be more self-aware. What is it that I want? You know, uh, very often, you know, we when we hear of crimes and terrible things happening and somebody says it was the heat of the moment, I didn't understand what I was doing. And of course, they regret what they've done. It because these people are not emotionally mature and we want our students to be emotionally mature. Um, we want them to belong, to build relationship, to be society ready. We are not islands. We are in a, uh, within a, 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 the context of society. And also, because this is a global village we are in, we need to have a feeling of uh, the diverse backgrounds of peoples and diverse cultures and diverse um, religions and uh, have empathy. All these immigrants that came to Greece and how we uh, took care of them uh, in Leros um, and other areas. Uh, remember, it's only because we were empathetic. So now why do that with stories? Because stories are 
um, mystery boxes. You see, they seize attention um, in a stress-free state. When you listen to a story, you let your guard down. You just like open up. Um, nothing's holding you back. And then you're ready to um, get the message of stories and many stories, basically sugarcoat bitter truths or life truths and also they give us the emotional and the language support that we need to express ideas and feelings horrible things happen we can when we cannot understand our feelings and we cannot express our feelings ours and others and so um, stories create this environment where we can share experiences in relationships. Um, and uh, we start understanding the um, shades, many shades of emotion between sad and happy. You have all this range of other feelings, angry and frustration. Anger and frustration have in between feelings. Stories bring those feelings out. And also they don't dictate uh, the message, they suggest it. And it's up to us to uh, draw our own, um, you know, conclusions. And because stories affect your brain chemistry, you need to watch this uh, TED um, speech. You can take a picture as I speak now. Um, and um, uh, Phillips and uh, David Phillips talks about the um, uh angels a cocktail <laughs> that uh, stories bring in us uh, uh, when we hear compelling and interesting stories then our endorphins improve our mood and our sense of well-being and uh, dopamine rises and keeps us alert and we want to see what's happening we don't want to miss a clue we want to predict what's going to happen and uh, oxytocin which is the love hormone rushes into our blood and um, we identify with the characters the protagonists we want them to be saved we want them to conquer the monster we want them to be you know uh, winners and yes, we do feel cortisol, which is the stress hormone. But you know what? This is not from fear or anxiety, but from curiosity and anticipation of what's going to happen. And when you watch um, those films and you really feel what the protagonist feels is what what the narratologist called transportation. Um, it's um, and this the, the 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 fact that we feel what they feel is both physical and mental. And um, uh, um, it's like when I watch um, a horror movie and I cannot take it because I don't feel well mentally or physically. And um, 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 let me move on. Oops. Why is it? Okay, benefits. So many, we are going to focus on the social, but very briefly mention the mental benefits of storytelling. You see, when you hear facts, you sequence them, you justify, you try to remember them, what you do is you activate your mentalizing network. And you're exercising your social cognition muscles. It's like when you go to the gym and you exercise your body muscles, uh, you're exercising your cognition mus muscles. And what does that mean? Is that you are better equipped to process your mental state, your own mental state, and that of the other people. And therefore, that uh, brings you an advantage. Now, from the educational point of view, uh, anything which is um, uh, given in a story format is um, is better internalized. And um, then uh, students are, because they're uh, delighted and they are um, stress-free, they are intrinsically motivated. And you see, language is internalized because it's colorful, it's meaningful, it's contextualized. We remember that we are basically teaching language and using it as a tool 
to pass on values to kids and other knowledge. So uh, that is the educational value. Now, from the social point of view, um, our sense of belonging is strengthened. We connect, we bond uh, in this group. We um, recognize uh, um, the characteristics of others and we check for biases. We uh, uh, try to um, shed preconceived ideas of um, things we think we know. And uh, we build compassion and team uh, skill and empathy. And now, uh, the values of stories, I mean, I cannot, um, I could spend like three to four hours talking about different stories and what values they uh, give us. Um, Journeys are value, uh, sorry, stories are journeys of exploration of humanity. And um, you can take a picture of that. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm just going to say, for example, that the Beauty and the Beast or the Frog Prince uh, are stories of the then, which are basically talking about inner beauty and uh, Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, is uh, of uh, grasping opportunities among other things. And the ugly duckling is about being different and finding a way out of your being different. Every story has something hidden. And if your eye is trained and you know about it, you can kind of transfer the value that speaks to you to your kids. Oh, and we come to our first story. <laughs> It's a story of discovery. Let me go back. Okay. The young crab and his mother. <laughs> now, um, I have created a PowerPoint to just get you into the um, stage. But in reality, when you are in a class, you are most probably going to use, um, you're going to use props and um, you're going to use um, uh, puppets. You're going to be a little bit more realistic and you're going to start with uh, story, story, and uh, the kids are going to be trained to reply, tell us a story, tell us a story. And when they are ready, you can go on. And um, for our story, um, we have a little crab leaving in the sea, in the bottom of a sea behind a big rock and uh, um, coral reef. And little crab says to mommy crab, mommy, mommy, I'd like to go out by myself. And mommy crab looks at it and says, well, I see that your pincers um, look like they have grown quite strong. Be careful, young baby. Be careful. I promise I'll be careful, mommy. I will promise I'll be careful. And so the story starts. By the way, parenthesis, um, you're going to use a simple present. You're going to use a simple past. It's up to you. It depends on the level of your students. And I'm not doing proper storytelling here. I'm giving you ideas as we go along. And so um, click, clack. Click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. He ventured out and not too far away, he saw some fishes and he says, wow, super. Now I'm going to play with them. I'm going to play with them. Uh, but then he had an idea and he says, I want to see uh, what I can do with my pincers and perhaps I can use them to scare them. And uh, indeed, uh, that's what he was doing. Click, clack, click, clack click clack he making noise moving around and uh, they stayed away because they were afraid and uh, uh, they said be careful with your pincers do not be such a bully and they swam away and the crab felt powerful oh because of his ability huh? he was somebody he could do things he had power and further down the 
C, he finds seaweed and the seaweed were moving, um, you know, this uh, waving movement. And I'd like you now to um, not stand, but in a class, I'd like you to get your students to stand up because we want some physical activity as well. And I'd like them to pretend that they are seaweeds and they are moving like that. And so as you are moving like that, can you get Yes, what the crab is going to do. I now am going to open my chat. What is the crab going to do to the seaweed? Any offers? Any ideas? Cut them off. Thank you. <laughs> You got into the spirit. Thank you. That's exactly what he did. I know, I know. I'll sneak away the seagrass and the seaweed and it will be fun. And, and that's exactly what he does. And he snips, 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 snips. But as he snips and click, clacks, clicks, clacks, uh, from under comes a clum, an unhappy clum, and says, Who's that cutting our seagrass? Our seagrass are very important to us. Little crab, little crab, stop what you're doing. You are naughty. You are naughty. You are naughty. And um, the uh, little crab says, why are you calling me naughty? Mm, if you call me naughty, I'm going to sting you with my claws. And, um, oh, are you then? Okay, come on, come on, get me, come, come on, get me. And you know what? That's exactly what the uh, pins, uh, what he wants to do. He uh, goes to uh, the clum, but the clum has closed down. You know what clums do? They close down and it's impossible um, to open them. But you know what, kids, if you were in class, you would say, how does fighting usually start? And then you'll have a little discussion about how fighting starts, how fighting starts. One wants something, the other, which is unreasonable, the other resist. So now the clum is he, uh, the crab, sorry, as he held tightly onto the closed clum, because the clum closed itself, he tried and tried and squeezed and squeezed and tried to break it, but it wouldn't break. And now, if I am going to use a drama game, I'm going to ask you to imitate the crab and squeeze the clam. So you would expect the class to give me a freeze frame of the clam squeezing the crab. Again, because you need to get kids um, moving, talking. Um, and of course, now he gave up. Uh, the crab gave up. He says, I think I will leave you. Your cell is very hard. I'm going to break my clothes. Um, and you see what I mean? You had better let go before you hurt yourself. Now, is little crab, I'm wondering, is he trying to realize the consequences of his actions? Can you um, write something on the chart? I mean, is he, does he start getting any ideas? Oh, yeah. What do you think? Is he getting any better? Is he, no, perhaps no, some doubts perhaps about his power? Yeah. Maybe I think he does, but I think myself, my dear. And you know what? Um, let me move on. Later down, further, further in the waves, he found the squid. And Crab said, I wonder what will happen if I sting the squid? And he goes and stings the squid and ouch! Who pinched me? And with that, furious Mr. Squid gave a whoosh sound and sent out a cloud of black 
black, black ink. Ah, ah, he didn't expect that. I cannot see, I cannot see. And crying little crab went backwards, 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 backwards. And suddenly he found himself in a net. The fisherman had thrown the net, which by the way, had caught other fish as well. And little crab finds himself in uh, a trap. And uh, he tries to uh, uh, get out of the net, but the holes are very small. By the way, what is the way out? Can you tell me? What is the way out? Is there a way out? Is there? It's hard. Cut the net. Oh my God, you're so clever. Cut off the net. You're so clever. Thank you. But you see, he's little crab. He doesn't have your experience. And, um, um, and, um, just as he was desperate, uh, just then Mr. Flatfish uh, swam by. Where's my flatfish? Uh, where's my flatfish? I don't know. I lost my flatfish. Anyway, the flatfish swims by and um, he says, um, uh, and he says, um, help me, help me, help me uh, get out of here. I want to go uh, to my mom. Sorry, says the flat, flat fish, but I cannot um, help you or the others stuck in there. Uh, but you can use your pincers to cut the net. Oh, that was such a good idea. And he tried to cut it, but then he said, the cord is too strong. The cord is too strong. And um, the flat fish said, try to try. Go, go. Don't give up. Like we always try to encourage people in difficulty. Now. Um, in um, when the students retell, you can give them roles, you can give them the flat fish um, on the one hand, which I've lost, and uh, the um, um, uh, crab, and uh, they can take roles, and one can tell the uh, lines of others, and slowly you're getting stories out of your kids. Now, uh, the little crab tried and click, clack, click, clack. He managed slowly to cut the uh, net and hooray, everybody went and they were very thankful to him. But, you know, um, the little fish um, wanted to go back home. I, I, he wanted to go home to tell his mom what happened. And, and uh, mom, mom, I did some terrible things. I didn't mean to. Uh, does little crab understand himself better now? I know you're going to say yes. So, <laughs> uh, yes, he has. He has come uh, into maturity. You know, life's lessons, he's got them. Can he regulate better his thoughts, feelings, and actions? Because you wanted to be all bravado, and I am the first, and I'm the best, and I can do things. But now he realizes his power is limited. And uh, he promised his mom he would use his pincers to help and not to destroy. So we better use our power to help and not to destroy. And uh, that was, if we ever had time and if you had one hour to, to talk about this story, you'll see that it's about attitudes, caring decisions, recognizing your feelings, and um, in the after doing activities, you can assign roles. You can tell them to recreate sense of the story, to create freeze frames, like we uh, did the um, freeze frame of the crab, uh, which was um, eating, uh, which was uh, <laughs> squeezing um, the clam. And uh, uh, students use their body, their get up, uh, their feet, their facial expression, everything to recreate uh, a frame. And um, when we get them to talk, we get them to retell from pictures. We give pictures of the whole thing, pictures. And from the following the sequencing, they tell the pictures. 
we ask questions, what if? What if, uh, for example, um, the flat fish did not come by? Would the crab have been saved? Uh, we ask them to change the events um, or to fix the story. So they... Um, shut down the logical part of their brain and they give you you know their own versions and you would be surprised how many versions will come out of everything and they can give you a little summary of the whole thing and yes we are into the second pig and the so story and the second story is called connected it's going to, again, try to be interactive. I mean, trying to show you to be interactive. Uh, I won't be able to take a lot of responses from you. Now, another way to start your storytelling is if you say crick and they go crack, crick, crack, crick, crack. And that um, gets them in the state of readiness. We are ready for your story. And are you ready? So a long, long time ago in the Amazon jungle, um, where people, where tri people lived without electricity, right, right, what else they lived without, without, without what? Can you please go to your chart and write what they lived without? Um, internet <laughs> and webinars and phones <laughs> and cars and oops. So many things, right? Um, so water, yes, they didn't have running water and all this. In those days, um, these tribe people, um, give me a minute. They were very happy. They were happy. Uh, they uh, had a chief they loved and they respected each other. They respected their home. Their home was a forest and they respected it. And why did they care for the forest? Tell me, right? Why did they care for their forest? I'm coming to see your chat. Why? Because uh, it's their home. Yes, like when we're going to our home, we clean it, we decorate it, we take care of it, we don't destroy it. Exactly. That's what normally we do, don't we? And the rainforest uh, recognized that uh, the... Uh, um, forest gave them and now you get your students to tell you, tell you, tell you and they extract and I don't have the time so I'm <laughs> doing this for you. They give them bananas, papayas, mangoes, nuts. Uh, give me some more. Give me some more. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make some allowance. What else? What else? What is, what else? Coconuts. <laughs> what else? What else? No idea what else. Apples. Yeah, fruit generally. Nuts. What else? Herbs. Yes, thank you. Herbs. Plants for healing. And animals and fish and metals and gemstones. And unfortunately, there was an accident. A there, chief who went up into a tall tree to cut off some fruit uh, had a headache or something and lost his balance and fell down and it was fatal and it was horrible for the whole uh community and his son the sitting angle um took over but sitting eagle the young chief wanted a bigger house what do you think he ordered men to do please write to me what did he want men to do Yes, what was that? Uh, what did he want men to do? To have his house? Mm -hmm. He ordered them to cut timber, exactly. Cut off, cut off to make his house. Cut off. And then, as if that was not enough, um, he wanted um, a garden around his house. What orders did the people get? For time's sake, um, you know, uh, of course you understand, he would say, get those um, trees raised, raised down. And how do you think the people feel? 
um, honestly, give me some adjective. How did the people feel uh, in the chat box uh, when they got these orders about um, cutting this and cutting that? How did they feel? Hmm? How did they feel? How did they feel? Threatened. What more? Awful. Yes. Exposed to dangers. Yes, 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 yes. They felt frustrated. They felt horrified. And what did the chief lack, by the way? What did he lack? Well, what did he lack? He didn't know empathy. He didn't understand the, uh, what's best for the community and the surrounding. And uh, he ruled through fear. And the people were upset, but obeyed from fear. Now, I'd like to get a bit personal here, because at the end, we'll have a story exchange. I mean, I don't know if we're really going to do that, but if you were doing this in class, you will say you have uh, one minute to jot down um, that time when you were ordered to do something which you hated. Eh? How did you react? How did you feel when you were ordered to do things you hated? Because that's what those people felt. And you know what? With all this cutting, there was this old woman, the wise woman who was not afraid. She had nothing to lose. And she came out um, and said, you fool, um, you fool, you are destroying, you are destroying, you are destroying the uh, environment. You are destroying our uh, um our hearts are going to be destroyed from all the rain that's going to come down from cutting down the trees. And she felt, and now you get your classroom to give you adjectives. Um, she felt, um, you see all these adjectives, uh, depending on the level, she felt upset, frustrated, angry, indignant, furious, all these things, all these things, all these variety of feelings. And the reasons uh, why people, of course, dislike the new th uh, chief, uh, they'll ask your kids and they'll say he was indifferent, he was arrogant. He cared little about the other people and he wouldn't do things, he wouldn't work, he wouldn't gather food, he wouldn't fish, he would only decorate himself and look in the mirror and he would not plant and he would not create and he would, spoke, uh, he would speak as if he knew everything. And he showed no emotion for the community, no emotion for the community. And um, you know what? Not long after he took over, this th this king, uh, who was uh, very sensitive in sleeping matters, he was woken up uh, at night by noises. And now I'm trying to think, what woke him up? What noises? What were the noises? Can you write in the chat what could be annoying him? I'm waiting to see your responses. Hmm? What could annoy him? Uh, a wild animal. Uh, you mean, um, um, mean howling and roaring? Um, this kind of animal? Okay. Could be, um, could be dogs barking or lynx. Could it be babies crying? Everybody comes with different uh, ideas. But then again, I think mothers would uh, not uh, would make sure their babies would not cry because they were afraid of him. And would it be wild cats fighting? And if you hear wild cats crying, they're really wild and they're loud and they sound like crying babies. And you know what? Wild cats found themselves an enemy because... Um, <laughs> The next day, uh, the um, uh, new chief uh, invited, uh, called everybody, and he said, the wild cats annoy my sleep. They're crying like babies. Try, they must disappear. Kill them all. Kill them all. And people uh, froze. They stopped cheering. Now, that was quite serious. They'd never done it before. And the old lady came forward and said, you fool, you fool. 
if you kill, kill, kill the cats, we will be uh, filled with rats and, and, and illnesses. And the chief, of course, uh, did not uh, um, take any notice of her. And um, the cats were slaughtered. Some were lucky enough, quick enough to escape into the jungle and never come back again. And things were fine for a few nights, but on the third night, can you predict what annoyed him now? <sighs> we had noises. What can it be now? I mean, who's got imagination? And I don't know. Imagination needs time, but rats, <laughs> wolves, <laughs> what else? Uh, uh, rats, rats, wolves. Um, yeah, of course. Why not rats? But you know what? Um, as I get you to predict, as I get you to predict, which is a technique of getting our kids to participate into the telling, because this is interactive telling, um, we help them to analyze, to uh, think of solutions, to make a decision. So this is a very useful uh, technique. And I'll give you a clue now. Uh, the chief lived next to a swamp. And you know what a swamp mean? A swamp is there are frogs around and the frogs grow quack, 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 squawk, squawk during the night. And the frogs annoy my sleep, he said the next day. And all of you take sticks and go to the swamp and it kill every one of them. And again, the old woman came and again, she said, you fool, you break the chain if you kill the frogs and everything is connected and uh, we will be attacked by flies and mosquitoes. And the tribesmen, um, unhappy, heavy hearted, took their uh, clubs and went and clubbed to death the frogs and uh, they returned um, unhappy. And uh, for a few nights, things were peaceful and the uh, king slept well, but on the third night, mosquitoes killed the village. And again, he called uh, his tribe, his men, and said, the mosquitoes annoy my sleep. Take sticks and stones and go and kill and everyone. Make them disappear. But of course, but of course, but of course. Um, the men took everything they could and they left and they created a new community and he was left all alone wondering starting to think what it means to break the chain what it means to be connected as he was alone because you see the people um the natives knew that everything is connected and you know what then we have a little project based on the story of course about uh, the food chain that one um living uh, organism is dependent on another and you cannot destroy the chain because that will affect everybody so the um, frog will need the insect the insect will need the plant um the rabbit will need um, just a, a little example the uh, carrot, the um, fox will need perhaps the uh, rabbit, uh, then the <laughs> lion will need the um, uh, fox. And uh, there is um, a lot about food chain. I mean, it's a whole project that they can do. Uh, the um, uh, eagle needing the owl and the snake, um, and it goes on like that, the coyote, the goat, and the raccoon. And so that is a project. And um, in a story like that, uh, of course, you're going to have a lot of discussion. And you are going to have a lot of what if, what if, what if this and what if that. And, uh, if, uh, and, and give the kids the opportunity to feel a sense of... Um, ownership and a sense of fun in creating new framework for the story to retell it from different point of view like you can retell the story from a frog point of view we were all sitting minding our own business freaky kick squawk squawking around 
And then we saw these humans with clubs coming and killing us. And it was dreadful, 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 I say, I'm a survivor. And they can tell the story from whatever point of view, from the old woman, from the tribes, from a soldier. Um, the sky's the limit. Hot sitting is my favorite drama uh, activity. What you do is you take, for example, the um, the, the, the eagle, the young <laughs> the chief you put him in a hot chair and you have everybody asking him questions to make him feel uncomfortable or to make him think of why he was reacting and he would have to give answer this is um this is this is um, a drama game everybody enjoys and hot seat um the character and get everybody to talk about um was happening and of course act out role play give um puppets give realia get them to retell the story and i think uh ah uh, i'm asking you if you don't think that stories are battery a battery of topics for elt they hide unconscious wisdom and principles and they're powerful vehicles for language teaching. And they work even when you do not connect with the story because we are not tribes people, but we feel them. And the magic of the story, we should not sacrifice it for the sake of grammar and conventional um, instruction because uh, the, the, the kids get the uh, structure and the grammar uh, by just imitating. They don't have to rationalize. Um, and what if stories disappear like rainforest? Won't we be much poorer? And yes, AI produces linguistically perfect stories in a matter of seconds. I've tried it, I'm wandering with it, but you know what? I've seen quite some hallucination going on with those AI created stories and, um, I think that they are missing some of the human factor and the human wisdom of centuries. And this is an open um, chapter to find out more as we go on. And finally, to the last <laughs> story, which is the pout, pout fish, the pout, pout fish. Um, Proud Proud Face is about um, happiness and personal relationships. And another way to start your storytelling is to say, are you ready? Are you steady? Shall we go? And they will go, we are ready. We are steady. Let's go. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm sure you are. So long time ago, a uh, fish and animals had voice. And in our story, in those times, among fish which hung out, lived the pout, pout fish. And the pout, pout fish said, I'm a pout, pout fish with a pout, pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place, blum, blum, blum. And ah, uh, uh, one day he's approached by a smiling clum, and the smiling clum says, Hey, Mr. Fees, with your frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down? Nice thought, Mr. Clum. I hear what you're saying, but that's how I am. That's my face. I'm a pout, pout face with a pout, pout face. And I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blum, blum, blum. And you realize that the whole class now goes with I'm a pout, pout face. And uh, <laughs> it's difficult for me to do it. We women want it this way. We, can, we don't want it the other way. Anyway, um, and so, and he's swimming and uh, with a, a 
with a gentle motion. Who comes around with a gentle motion? It is the jellyfish. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scowl, I wish you would not greet us with a grimace and a growl. And poor, poor pout face, Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it is not up to me. I'm a pout, pout face with a pout, pout face. And I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. And you see the repetitive structure and you see the choral work that this very simple um, uh, story uh, uh, has got inside it. And um, one thing now you need to stop uh, your, your telling and you ask your um, students, why do the fish fail? when they try to correct Mr. Uh, Fish's sadness. It's like why we do teachers fail to persuade our students to work harder when they don't work? And why do parents fail to teach um, certain manners at certain times their kids? It's why, why do they resist? Why, why, why can you write, why? Let me go to my chat, that's not an easy, answer why oh god lack of empathy mm. changes heart really I, I mean this is so truthful how about about a fixed mindset how about having like preconceived notions of what you can do and what you can't do and you know what mm. let me go on um but you see, Pow Pout Fish believes things do not change. He has fixed mindset. And education is all about teaching us to have flexible mindset. And along comes a squid uh, with a sl uh, slender face, who is rather impolite. Uh, and uh, what does he say? What does he say? Hey, Mr. Fish, how about a smile? A little joy, a little hope. Mr. Squid, I would try, but I haven't got any choice. Hear my voice. Take a look and you will see why. I'm a pout, pout face with a pout, pout face. And it goes on like that. And again, we see the choral repetitive and rhyming parts of the story, because most of these stories have rhyming, uh, which is so, mm, it touches our hearts. And uh, uh, what happens next? Uh, who comes next? Uh, who comes next? Uh, who comes next? Uh, and let me see who comes next. Oh, it's the octopus, and it's the octopus, and he says, Hey, Mr. Fish, I will be straight. Your pout is a bad trait. Mr. Octopus, this is my mouth. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blum, blum, blum. The jellyfish, the squid, the octopus, they all try to complain. They all complain uh, about how he is. Is it okay for us to try and fix the others? I mean, is it okay if they're different? You realize this is a big discussion. I'm not going to ask you to um, contribute to it because we don't have much time. And along comes a silvery fish, a brilliant swimmer. She goes near the pout pout fish. She gives him a kiss right in his pout mouth. And it looks straight into the eyes and then swims south and away. Oh my God, oh my God, the fish, pow pow fish, 
is amazed, he's aghast, he's surprised, he's shocked, and he is different. What is he thinking? Please tell me, what is he thinking? Go to your chat. What is he thinking? What? What is he thinking? Does he like it? Why is the fish kissing me? <laughs> he doesn't like it. Or is he liking it? What I mean, why is he kissing me? A kiss made the difference. A kiss, a kiss, a kiss. <laughs> Yes, well, no one has done this before. And you know what? I liked it. I liked it. And let me try and do this myself. And uh, no more a stone face. No more. Um, uh, he blinks. He looks around and he speaks at last. Uh, and Mr. Uh, part face is transformed. My friends, I should have known it all along. I thought I was pouty, but it turns I was wrong. I'm a kiss, kiss fish with a kiss, kiss face for spreading cherries all over the place. So I'll smooch, smooch, smooch. And it goes smooching here, smooching there, kissing there. And is the pout pout face more in touch with his real feelings now and thoughts? Well, sometimes we think we know ourselves, but we don't. He has got a new purpose in life. I'm a kiss, kiss face, and eh? now there's a new purpose in life. And his purpose is to go and kiss and, and spread happiness and, you know, build bridges and be friendly. And what is the purpose? These are questions you could ask in class. And why does having purpose make us happy? I'll tell you from experience. <laughs> um, one thing that can uh, kill a uh, person who resigns when he uh, who, who, who who goes on retirement because he has got to go on retirement is the fear of losing purpose in life. Purpose makes such a big difference in life. Take it from someone who's a little bit older than you, or shall I say, much older. Um, and now a little a little poem um, and a little message. Uh, smile about smile. Smile works like trampoline. It lifts up everybody's spirits. So let's go. I mean, do it in class. Smiling is infectious. You can cut it like the flu. When someone smiled at me today, I started smiling too. I passed around the corner and saw so someone green. When he smiled, I realized I'd passed it on to him. So if you feel a smile begin, don't leave it underdetected. Let's start an epidemic and get the world infected. <laughs> and do a little bit of rapping, rapping, rapping. And uh, we don't choose what happens in our lives, but we choose our reaction. There are some of the... Uh, lessons and how much time this was all about attitude choices purpose and goals um you know what there's no time can you take a picture of that and use it because <laughs> that little story gives you uh two hours of lessons like what does it mean to know thyself what makes you happy do you try to change people who are around you? Do you accept them as they are? Is it okay if their targets are different from what we think is best? About purpose. So questions. Um, let me see what's that. Outcomes of this approach. I, I don't know if I have the time for that. Um, outcomes. What happened? You see, 
if I have this storytelling approach, which means I come up with a story, I have some ideas in mind, like what is it that I want to pass on to my kids using language, and then what activities I'm going to have to get them talking, and then also at the end, get them to tell and act in um be users of the language if i use this um method i will help social understanding i'll get them critical thinking uh they'll start having a sense of unwritten laws of social culture norms um our language is going to be meaningful we acquire it better uh, there will be opportunities for students to be physically involved, making frames and, you know, um, preparing the story and using their whole body and face expression and, um, and voice. Um, we will have to adjust the material for uh, the, uh, f uh, make it flexible to uh, be based on the needs of the kids and the characteristics of our kids. And uh, we'll cultivate love for stories, love for stories mean reading, stories mean literature, and we don't want these to die out. Now, I would like you to take a picture of that to leave um, if language cert wants to have more um, seminars with me. I mean, take a picture of that and see what, more can come but i think we have to leave some time for questions yes sylvia thank you very much Zafi. i would agree with one participant we have been uh, you know infected by the smile and by the warmth of your storytelling activities uh you know whether they kind of engaging inspiring approach um i'm sure that the participants here uh, have uh, got a lot of ideas and also uh, the way that you exemplify, you know, with your own telling, uh, you know, with mm. your voice and the acting and the drama. Uh, this is exactly why we come to, um, you know, kind of live webinars to um, to hear about this. Um, now, I just wanted to, I wanted to, uh, I mean, we can, uh, we can wait if there are any questions. I'm just going to give a little bit of time for people uh, to, but I, I wanted I wanted you to share, if possible, any of your own personal, you know, because you've done it in the classroom, so yeah. you know, so much. And uh, could you share some of your magic moments? Like, you know, how did you see your students transforming or responding through the storytelling activities? Well, first of all, um, as I say, the end uh, students have to come to the end result, which means them telling stories. Uh, that means, first of all, you have the opportunity for them to uh, get out of their shyness. Uh, if they're very shy, and some are, and some are uh, threatened, I mean, they do not feel perfect coming on stage or coming even in front of the class and telling, but uh, they can tell uh, with uh, puppets. I haven't got any puppets today. I mean, um, there are even finger puppets here, I've got a finger puppet, uh, and they can have them, they can hide behind, uh, behind their, um, um, let's say I've got an aunt here, they can even hide behind and tell the story, or you can make uh, shows out of them. You cannot imagine. When I had, a, when we had all the students, uh, we had a program as who would come first uh, according to the program and we was calling it. now this group because they're usually telling groups they um, we give them a storytelling leaflet uh, they choose they read stories they choose which story they want to do they uh, transform it they give roles to each other they um, practice at home in their homes they go or online and they prepare it then we devote something like three lessons in class where each group presents their story. Uh, some are select, most are selected. Uh, we have a big storytelling event, which they come on stage and in the big um, place we have, like a theater. And uh, because not everybody gets, because we were a very big school, we are a big school. And even if we give two and a half hours on storytelling, we still cannot contain any everybody. So what I would do, I would uh, very often take my um, uh, mobile and I would, um, those ones who didn't have time, I would videotape them and I would upload them on the YouTube of the school, uh, a special storytelling YouTube. And um, the parents could see, the kids have on their portfolio, 
And I mean, it's a lot of work, but everybody would say, when are we going to start storytelling? And, and I think it's your oh. own passion, Zephy, Zephy that, uh, you know, just drives all that. And that's what we've all uh, been inspired and touched upon today. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, we have comments here uh, from uh, participants who, you know, talk about uh, listening to your stories, um, you know, all day. And I know that uh, we have um, just a question about the levels and how that um, approach can be adapted for different levels. And that's my final question before we close. Can this approach be adapted for other levels for students? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you for this question, whoever asked me. Because you see, we associate storytelling with young uh, kids only, but this is wrong. You take storytelling up to proficiency level when we say storytelling it could be stories of art it could be telling the story of painting it could be telling the story of inventors of people who left their mark in the world it could be st uh, stories of physical phenomena um it could be um uh, there's nothing you cannot. And in fact, uh, we also do this in Vitaliki. We did it. Sorry, I left. I retired. Uh, <laughs> so it's a last year. Um, so um, they kind come and uh, get ready with our presentation skill. So you may start with chants uh, in A junior, B junior. You go with uh, um, uh, wisdom stories. Uh, you go on with uh, celebrating occasion stories. Uh, they... Uh, I have like so many kind of folk tales and everything. Uh, and every time, apart from the language, apart from the messages, uh, you work on their presentation skills. And with that, I'm closing. The people who were active in my storytelling from early on, they were the ones who were TED talkers. They were the ones who did um, court cases like, I mean, uh, big project where they would be the attorneys and they would uh, the, the lawyers mm. and they would uh, crave the stage. And they were very comfortable with it. You just take it up with levels consistently. And that's why some teachers, if, if someone has got it, like I haven't got it with technology, I don't think I will try that. But if you've got it with storytelling, um, you know, get trained and you realize what I mean by that. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank all the participants. Uh, the, um, the, you will receive um, certificates of participation uh, and also the recording will be available later on on our uh, YouTube channel. There is a short survey uh, to answer as we finish and we would really appreciate your feedback on the session. With that, I want uh, to thank everybody and I want to especially thank Zafi Mandali for inspiring us today with uh, to you know enhance and build on our storytelling skills and uh, Zafi, thank you very much for being with us. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank okay. you all. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye bye. Smile. <laughs> Always. Yeah.